Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all. Good to see you. That's good. A um, couple of announcements. Uh, there were nine lily plants left over last week. If you purchased one, if you gave a donation for one, um, they're in the sacristy. Doug has watered them and deadheaded them, so I'm not sure if there's still any flowers on them or not. There are, he's saying. He's assuring me there are. Um, so if you have not received yours, please talk to Doug after church. He'll make sure you get one. All right? Can and, you let him go to the cross plant? Hmm? Can you let him go to the cross plant? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. That's two of them right there. There you go. All righty. Um, also, you know, you all know, well, you know mostly Leimani. You probably don't pay that much attention to his parents because he's so cute. Um, but they're expecting their second baby May 1st. It's another baby boy. And Susan and some of the ladies have gotten together to have a, um, a, a baby shower of sorts next Sunday following worship. Um, there'll be cake and I'm assuming something to drink to go along with that. Um, since they're expecting another baby boy, they're not in need of a lot of things except for newborn diapers. So if you want to come, please come. If you can bring some diapers, that's fabulous. If not, that's okay too. Um, but if you want more information, talk to Susan Daly. She has all of that information. Um, most of you are aware that John Allsbrook lost his older brother this past week. Um, and he is not with us today. Manford has come to play in his place. Um, um, but we, um, we send our prayers and our love to him. Um, Reese was 43 years old. Um, and it was his older brother. So uh, he's taking this appropriately hard. So our prayers and our best wishes are with him uh, while he's, he's absent today. I know that Jerry does not have any announcements. Does anybody else have announcements? Oh, David. Uh, if you did not make a bit of breakfast yesterday, the meal was uh, delicious. Uh, but we had an excellent speaker. He was from the Peninsula Agency on Aging. Uh, and if you're not familiar with them for uh, the older population, they provide a lot of services, which include transportation, uh, nutrition advice, uh, care. Uh, they have a new program where they're actually taking uh, veterans to the Veterans Hospital if you need transportation for that. And of course, most of us are familiar with Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. And I know we have at least five people from our congregation that deliver on a, on a weekly basis. Uh, there are brochure, brochures in the fellowship hall if you're interested that provide information on these services. And of course, if we don't need it, we probably all know someone who could take advantage right. of some of the services that they offer. Thank you. And one more thing, the sure. Linton offering, I'm not sending in the, the, <coughs> the donations for it, it's going to Peninsula Agency on Aging, I'm sorry, it's going to uh, Peninsula Food Bank. Yeah. And I'll hold it open until after next Sunday and we'll then send the donations to the Okay. Thank you so much. Anyone else? No, we'll let Manfred begin. <laughs>
you're here. And I'm glad to see those who are still viewing on Facebook and YouTube. I'm glad that you're with us as well. I invite you to stand as you are able for our opening hymn, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise, is hymn number 312. imperishable and unfading. In this we rejoice, even when we suffer trials. For although we have not seen Jesus, we love him. And although we have not seen him, we believe in him. For the outcome of our faith is the salvation of our souls. May we continue in prayer. God of signs and wonders, you have revealed, revealed to us that Jesus Christ is your Son and our Savior. Strengthen our faith that we may have life in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. As we prepare to hear the word read and proclaimed again, we turn to God to pray. Guiding God, send your Holy Spirit upon the reading of your word, that it may serve to show us the path of life and lead us into your presence where there is fullness of joy. Amen. Our scripture this morning reads, the New Testament lesson is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 14, and then 22 through 32. Okay. 
of Peter standing with the eleven raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Israelites, this is what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonder, and signs that God did to him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and full knowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having released him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for him to be held in his power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I say to you confidentially, of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus raised up, and that all of us are witnesses. Now, if you join me in the Psalter, you'll find it on page 748 in the Hymnals. Perishable 
is tempted by fire may be found in, to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul. I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark and my hand in his side, I will not believe. The week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. While the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to, to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Eric and Lily, would you like to come up? Did you know it's still Easter? Yes. It is for 50 days. Yeah. Did you all know that? Yep. Okay, good. Today is Orthodox Easter. Today is Orthodox Easter, you're right. Do you celebrate Orthodox Easter? Yeah. No. <laughs> but he knows what it is. That's a good thing. Yeah. So we just saw it on the calendar. You saw it on the calendar. Very good. Yeah. You did? Yeah. So, last week we did celebrate Easter, didn't we? Yeah. And, and what do we celebrate at Easter? Egg hunting. Egg hunting. What else? <laughs> Easter bunny. What else? Hmm? Yeah, well, we've got two votes for the Easter bunny and candy. What else do we celebrate at Easter? There, there's something about a man named Jesus. Isn't his birthday on Christmas? His birthday is on Christmas, but on Easter we celebrate that he is still alive. Yes. Yes. And we get to celebrate that for 50 more days until it comes to pen. How old is Jesus? Jesus was born more than 2,000 years ago. Well, he's over 2,000. He's over 2,000. He's probably like. 2015. Maybe. And he's still out. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So that's what we celebrate at Easter, and we keep celebrating it. Today we sang some Easter songs, and we'll sing some more later. 
and they're filled with hallelujahs and amens and all sorts of wonderful words. Good job. We sang that last, the, late, the choir sang that last week. That's called the Alleluia Choir. Of course. Of course, sorry. <laughs> it is the choir, it was the choir. I was close, not close enough. So we're gonna celebrate for the next 50 days that Jesus is risen. And so we're gonna sing wonderful hymns. And we're gonna hear lots of words about Jesus coming back to see his disciples, just like I just read now. Jesus comes and he visits his disciples and says, here I am. And it, it will be Christmas again in some, some months. It will be. It cannot be Christmas right now. Because it's Easter. Easter is as important as Christmas. Yep. Because it's as important. So. I don't know which I like more, Christmas or Easter. Well, you probably like both of them because there's presents at both of them, aren't there? Yeah. 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 But at Easter time, we celebrate things besides just eggs and candy and bunnies. We celebrate the risen of Jesus. Why is there a worm day where we celebrate worms? There is on Earth Day. And actually, we are going to bless some worms in the church, uh, outside of the church in May. Can we post the worms? Yes, you can. Eric, come here. So, no, don't think we'll be eating worms. So, this morning, this morning, I want you to celebrate with me and I want you to repeat after me. Can you say, Alleluia? Hallelujah. Good job. Eric, how about you? Hallelujah. He's a little, he's a little shy this morning. I'm not sure why. Alleluia. Good job. So now that song will be stuck in your head and you can sing it all day long. Yeah. Sorry, it's been, Cindy. It's been stuck in my head since I first heard it, which, is, which was not that good. You heard it someplace else? Yeah, on YouTube. On YouTube, you heard yeah. the Hallelujah Chorus. When okay. this stuff happens on YouTube, they literally just randomly play it. But Got it. Randomly play it. Well, that's a good thing to listen to. It's a good thing to remember. You can just say different things like, Paw, you could, but we're going to say hallelujah. And Easter Bunny. Will you pray with or me? Or Easter Bunny on Christmas. No, Easter Bunny on Christmas. <laughs> Will you pray with me? Y'all are just getting silly now. Will you pray with me? Yes. Okay. Will you put your hands together? No. Thank you. Gracious God, we do thank you for these beautiful children and their enthusiasm. And we thank you for your son who is risen and whom we celebrate this day. So we say hallelujah, and we say thank you, and we give you our hearts and our prayers this day in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. Good job. All right, off you go. <laughs> Don't you wish you had that much joy all of the time? We used to have that kind of joy. What happened? Got old. Got old. Yeah, who said that? Yeah, it got old. Um, but today is a day, I mean, last Sunday we celebrated Easter, but it's not over yet. And sometimes we forget that. We forget that it's a 50-day season of joy and celebration where Jesus comes back to see his disciples time and time again. And it's no different than in the reading this morning. The disciples are afraid, so they lock themselves in their room, and Jesus appears to them. And he says, as I told the children, here I am. I am with you, and I give you peace. Let your souls and your hearts not be troubled. I am alive. See, this is the fulfillment of everything he prophesied and was prophesied about him, that he would die, but he would live forevermore. And so the disciples are still trying to, as we say today, wrap their head around such an amazing idea that this man who they loved, who was their teacher, their healer, their preacher, has come back to them. And they can see him. See, that's, that's the thing in this reading is 
They see Jesus as Jesus. They don't see just a spirit. They see the man who was crucified. They saw the marks in his hands, the spear uh, wound in his side. And they know because they see him that it is him. They know also because they hear him that it is Jesus. For those of us who um, like to make telephone calls, and you can answer the phone call and know immediately who it is, not because of caller ID, but because of the voice, the sound of the person that's on the other end of the line. They knew Jesus' voice. They knew his shape, his form, his humanity. And now they know his divinity. They know his holiness. But then there's Thomas, for some reason, who is missing from the scene. And a week later, again, they are still hiding themselves on the Sabbath and waiting for who knows what. They'd seen Jesus. Perhaps they weren't sure what was going to come next, even though he says, as God has sent me, I'm going to send you. Thomas is missing from the scene. And when he does come, he says, I'm not going to believe what you said. I have to see it for myself. How many of us want proof? We want proof. We want to see that God is real and God exists. Um, and it's because we're human and we have questions and we doubt and we ask the question, why? And why not? And Thomas is no different. See, he's asking for what Jesus has already given the disciples. He's already showed them his hands and his side. And he says, I'd like to see that too. I think that doubt and Thomas get a bad rap <laughs> throughout history. You know, like doubting is going to make God go away. Which is untrue. Like our questions um, would cause God to fall by the wayside, which is untrue, any more than our joy and our celebrations would cause him to go away. Thomas sees Jesus, and it doesn't say in the scripture that he actually touched him. He saw him, he heard him, he cried out, my Lord and my God. And how often do we miss the opportunity to cry that out ourselves because we're busy looking at other things or listening and distracted? I've said this before, and my mom used to say that my dad had a, um, not necessarily a hearing problem, although he did have a hearing problem. He had a listening problem. And I wonder if sometimes we're hearing God, but we are so distracted by the other things in the world that are louder that we're distracted from truly listening when Jesus stands in our midst. And he comes to us as he came to the disciples. He says, I give you peace. Let your hearts be at rest. Do not be afraid. I am enough. And yet we continue to look for proof, for evidence, for some sign that God is real and God is present and doing what God would say, or what God said he would do anyway. Many years ago, as I was coming into the process of discernment to ministry, um, things fell into place that I would be accepted at Virginia Wesleyan, which was a college at that point. And I was getting nervous the closer the day came to actually doing this. Because God said, the first step is go back to school. And I told God I wasn't smart enough. And God did not listen to me. And so wanting proof, wanting evidence, I said, okay, God, if it's really your will that this happen, show me a sign. Now, few of us are bold enough to to say that out loud, 
because we don't want to admit our own weakness, but I was weak and I needed a reminder that God was real. And this all happened in the car. And as I was waiting for God to show me this great miracle and this great sign, a car pulled in front of me that had a Virginia Wesleyan College sticker. <laughs> see my hands and see my side. See that I'm real, see that I'm present. See that I brought the peace that God gave me and I'm giving it to you so that you can go out into the world. The gospel says this is the whole purpose of this book is so that we might come and continue to believe that Jesus is who he said he was, that God's fulfillment of his plan for salvation has come to pass if we but believe. And sometimes believing means doubting. Sometimes it means rejoicing. Sometimes it means asking questions. And none of those things are too difficult for God. Not the God that Jesus is. And so today, as we gather on this second Sunday of Easter, we remember his resurrection. We remember that there were those who were still trying to figure out what comes next, just like we are still trying to figure out what comes next. We believe, we have faith, we have the assurances and the promises that have been made by God to each of us. What comes next is what comes next. Whether we understand it, whether we question it, it still is what comes next and God will be there in the midst of it all. There's a, um, I don't want to call it a cartoon, it's an image that I've seen and it's two-sided. One side says no, K-N-O-W, God, no, K-N-O-W, peace. And on the opposite side, it's N-O, God, N-O, peace. God came that we might have peace of mind, peace of heart, peace of soul. So that we could go out into the world and do and continue the work that he began. So whether you are Thomas or one of the others at, who had been, have experienced Jesus up close and personal, what comes next is going out into the world. Because otherwise we wouldn't believe if there hadn't been somebody else who believed before us we would not have come to know this story and the purpose of this gospel. And so today you are the people of a resurrected, risen Christ. And nothing can take that from you. So live fully into it in the best way you know how. Live into your doubts and your fears and your trepidations and all of those things that make us who we are. But remember that when you know God, you know peace. And that is sufficient for this day. And it will be sufficient for all the days that are yet to come. And for that, we give thanks to God, who is risen indeed. Amen.
I invite you to stand for our affirmation of faith that's printed in your morning bulletin. And together we speak these words. We belong to God, eternal and infinite, creator of all things and all that is to come. We follow Christ, who comes to us from God and reveals God to us. He heals people and transforms lives and calls us to join in his ministry. He was crucified, dead, and was raised from the God, and reigns over all creation. And he bids us to die and rise with him in the service of the healing of the world. We are moved by the Holy Spirit, together with the communion of saints, and as members of the body of Christ, God's holy universal church. We are confident in the forgiveness of sins, the power of resurrection, and the reality of eternal life. In all things, it is our desire to follow Christ by the grace of the Holy Spirit, for God's glory. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for the singing of the next hymn, 529, How Firm a Foundation.
pray, resurrecting God in a doubting world, keep us in faith that we may have life. We pray for the Church Universal. Breathe on us, your Holy Spirit, that we may honor and pass on the great inheritance we have received. Keep us in faith that we may have life. We pray for Mother Earth that we may touch her wounds with healing care and love. Keep us in faith that we may have Pray for the whole world, its nations, its leaders, and its people, that your wisdom and peace may prevail. Keep, Keep us in faith, faith that we may have life. We pray for all those in need, the suffering, the oppressed, the ill, the dying, and all those who care for them. Keep us in faith that we may have life. Jim Day, Michelle Day, Marty Skull, Susan Keller, We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. Keep, Keep us in faith, faith that we may have life. Blessed are you, O God, who through Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, and in the community of the Holy Spirit, give us an inheritance that is imperishable and unfading now and forevermore. Amen. May we pray as Jesus taught his disciples, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because we have a generous God, we turn to him again in prayer, thanking him that he is our portion and our cup. In, your, in our hearts, are, in you, O oh God, our hearts are glad, our souls rejoice, and our bodies rest. Bless and multiply our offerings and pledges, that they may bring the joy of your presence more deeply into the world. Amen. I invite you to stand for our closing hymn, Thine Be the Glories, on page 308.
pray for the renewal of Christ's church. Almighty, Almighty eternal, eternal, just, just and merciful God, God, grant us the desire to do only what pleases you and the strength to do only what you command. Cleanse our souls, enlighten our minds, and inflame our hearts with your Holy Spirit, that we may follow in the footsteps of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Trust and love the Christ that you cannot see, and let that bring you joy, for that faith will bring the salvation to your soul. May the God of, who loves and resurrects us give you a goodly portion of the Holy Spirit and new birth into a living hope. Amen. Amen.